Mountain villages in Pakistan are renowned for their breathtaking natural beauty and serene landscapes. Nestled in the towering ranges of the Himalayas, Karakoram, and Hindu Kush, these villages offer a picturesque blend of rugged peaks, lush valleys, and crystal clear rivers. The charm of these villages lies in their simplicity and their harmonious coexistence with nature. The houses, often made from stone and wood, are built to blend into the mountainous terrain, giving the villages a timeless, rustic feel. Streams and waterfalls cascade through the valleys, fed by glacial melt, adding to the tranquility of the surroundings. Houses made of stone and mud in the mountain villages of Pakistan are an integral part of the region's architectural heritage. These structures are built using locally sourced materials, reflecting the resourcefulness of the villagers and their deep connection to the surrounding environment. The walls of these houses are typically constructed from stones stacked tightly together, often without the use of cement held in place by a mixture of mud. This method provides natural insulation, keeping the interiors cool in the summer and warm during the harsh winters. The stone is abundant in the mountainous regions, and its durability makes it ideal for withstanding the rugged climate, including strong winds, heavy snowfall, and occasional earthquakes. The roofs are usually flat, and constructed from wooden beams, covered with layers of mud and sometimes thatch or grass for added insulation. In some cases, the flat roofs are used as additional living or storage space, especially during the summer when families can sleep outside under the stars or dry fruits, vegetables, and grains for winter storage. Inside, the homes are modest yet practical. The walls are often plastered with mud to smooth out the surface and provide further insulation. Windows are small to minimize heat loss, and wooden doors are common. The floors are typically made of compacted earth, sometimes covered with rugs or woven mats. Many of these homes have a communal area centered around a hearth or wood-burning stove, which serves as both a cooking space and a source of warmth during the cold months. The simplicity of the design, coupled with the natural materials, gives these houses a rustic charm that blends seamlessly with the stunning mountainous landscape around them. Education in mountain villages can be challenging due to the remoteness of many communities. However, in recent years, efforts have been made to improve access to education. Small village schools often provide basic education, though higher education typically requires travel to nearby towns or cities. In some areas, non-governmental organizations NGOs, and government initiatives have helped establish schools and provide teachers to these remote villages. Healthcare facilities are limited in mountain villages, and many villagers rely on traditional remedies and herbal medicine to treat common ailments. Access to modern healthcare often requires long journeys to the nearest town, which can be difficult, especially during winter when roads are blocked by snow. Living in mountain villages comes with significant challenges. Harsh winters, limited access to modern conveniences, and the isolation of the villages can make daily life difficult. During winter, snow often blocks roads, cutting off villages from towns for weeks or even months. This isolation means that villagers must be self-reliant, 
storing enough food and supplies to last through the winter. Despite these hardships, the people of the mountain villages are remarkably resilient. Their connection to the land, strong family bonds, and deep sense of community help them endure the challenges of mountain life. Their ability to adapt to the difficult terrain and weather, combined with their centuries-old traditions, allows them to thrive in one of the most beautiful yet unforgiving environments in the world. The rhythm of daily life in mountain villages is dictated by the seasons and the demands of nature. Most families are involved in agriculture and their day often begins at dawn. In the spring and summer, villagers work in the terraced fields, growing crops such as wheat, barley, potatoes, and maize. These crops are essential for their survival, providing both sustenance and income. Livestock, including goats, sheep, yaks, and cattle, are also tended to throughout the day, providing milk, meat, wool, and manure for farming. The tasks of tending to crops, feeding animals, and gathering firewood are shared among family members. Men typically handle the heavier farm work such as plowing and herding livestock, while women play a central role in household chores, including cooking, weaving, and taking care of children. Women also participate in planting and harvesting crops. Children often assist their parents in these tasks from a young age, learning the skills that will sustain them in this environment. In the winter months, when snow covers the ground and temperatures drop, life slows down. Villagers prepare for the harsh winter by storing food, drying vegetables, and collecting enough firewood to keep their homes warm. During this time, people engage in indoor activities like spinning wool, weaving, and making handicrafts. Social gatherings are more frequent, with families coming together around wood-burning stoves to share stories, drink tea, and enjoy simple meals. The mountain roads in the villages of Pakistan are both awe-inspiring and challenging, offering some of the most scenic yet treacherous routes in the world. These roads wind through the towering peaks of the Himalayas, Karakoram, and Hindu Kush ranges. Hugging steep cliffs and overlooking deep gorges and river valleys below, many of the roads are narrow, often unpaved, and carved out of the mountainside. With sharp bends, hairpin turns, and steep inclines, driving through these areas requires skill and caution. In some places, the roads are only wide enough for one vehicle, making passing a delicate maneuver. Guardrails are rare, adding to the sense of adventure but also danger. During the monsoon season or after heavy snowfall, landslides and rockfalls are common. Further complicating travel. Despite the challenging conditions, these roads offer breathtaking views of snow-capped peaks, cascading waterfalls, terraced fields, and traditional villages perched on the mountainsides. The Karakoram Highway, which connects Pakistan to China, is one of the most famous mountain roads in the region. Known for its rugged beauty and engineering marvels, traffic in these mountain villages is sparse compared to urban areas, but it is diverse. Alongside small cars and 4x4 vehicles designed for rough terrain, it's common to see brightly decorated buses and trucks known as jingle trucks due to the bells and chains that adorn them. These trucks, often painted in vibrant colors with intricate patterns, add a cultural flavor to the roads. Motorcycles and bicycles are also used by locals, especially for shorter distances. In more remote villages, donkey carts or people on foot are a common sight, especially on the smaller paths that are inaccessible to vehicles. Shepherds with their flocks of goats or sheep may also be seen on the roads, creating a slow, relaxed pace of traffic. The pace of life is slower here, 
and travelers often need to be patient, as roadblocks due to weather, animals, or vehicles breaking down are frequent. Despite the difficulties, the mountain roads in Pakistan offer a journey that is as much about the experience of nature and local culture as it is about reaching a destination. In the mountain villages of Pakistan, the traditional method of grinding paddy and wheat using the flow of spring water is a fascinating example of sustainable, eco-friendly technology. This centuries-old practice utilizes small watermills, locally known as Jandar or Garrett, which are powered by the force of flowing water from mountain streams or springs. Below the millstone mechanism, a wooden or metal water wheel is positioned horizontally. The water wheel is connected to the upper millstone by a vertical shaft. Water from the spring or stream is channeled through a narrow wooden chute or pipe to hit the paddles of the water wheel with force, causing it to spin. This rotation is transferred to the upper millstone, turning it and grinding the grain. Once the water mill is set up near a flowing spring or stream, the villagers direct water from the stream using small ditches or channels into the chute that leads to the water wheel. The force of the water hitting the paddle spins the wheel, which in turn rotates the millstone. Villagers bring their harvested wheat or paddy to the mill in sacks. The grain is fed into the millstone's central hole, where it falls between the rotating upper stone and the stationary lower stone. The grinding action is slow and steady, In the mountainous regions of Pakistan, horses and mules play a crucial role in transporting goods along the narrow, rugged roads where motorized vehicles often cannot pass. These animals are well suited to navigating the steep, rocky paths that wind through the Himalayan, Karakoram, and Hindu Kush ranges, making them indispensable for daily life in remote mountain villages. The mountain roads in these areas are often little more than dirt or gravel paths, barely wide enough for a single person or animal to pass. They wind along the sides of steep cliffs, cross over rushing streams, and traverse rough, uneven ground. In some cases, the paths are precarious, with sheer drops on one side and towering rock faces on the other. During the rainy season or after heavy snowfall, these roads can become slippery, further complicating travel. Because of these conditions, horses and mules are essential for carrying goods to and from the villages. These animals have remarkable agility and strength, allowing them to navigate the narrow roads with stability and endurance. Their sure-footedness makes them ideal for traversing the rocky, uneven terrain, where any misstep could lead to dangerous falls. The sight of horses and mules carrying goods along the mountain roads is a common and essential part of daily life. Their slow, steady progress through the rugged landscape is a testament to the enduring connection between the people and the land in these breathtaking mountain regions of Pakistan. Potato farming is one of the main agricultural activities in these mountain villages due to the favorable growing conditions. The cool temperatures, fertile soil, and availability of water from glacial streams create ideal conditions for potato crops. The cultivation process typically begins in spring, when the snow melts and the soil becomes workable. Farmers prepare terraced fields on the mountainsides, which help prevent soil erosion and make efficient use of limited flat land. These terraces are plowed using traditional wooden plows, pulled by oxen or donkeys. Seed potatoes, which are small tubers from the previous harvest, are planted in rows. The potatoes require little maintenance, but careful irrigation is essential. Mountain streams, often fed by glaciers, provide a reliable water source for the fields. As the plants grow, they are occasionally earthed up, where soil is piled around the base of the plants to protect them and encourage larger tuber growth. The crop is typically ready for harvest in late summer or early autumn. During the harvest, families work together to dig up the potatoes, which are then stored in cool, dry cellars or rooms to last through the winter months. 
Potatoes are a staple food in these villages, and they are also sold at local markets, providing a vital source of income. Cattle rearing is another key part of life in the mountain villages, with livestock playing a crucial role in both subsistence and local economy. The most common livestock include cows, yaks in higher altitudes, goats and sheep. These animals are well adapted to the mountainous environment and provide the villagers with milk, meat, wool and manure, which is used to fertilize crops. In summer, Cattle are often taken to higher alpine pastures, known as grazing meadows or docks, where the grass is abundant. This seasonal migration, known as transhumance, is a long-standing tradition in the region. During these months, herders, often men and boys, stay in temporary shelters or stone huts in the highlands, looking after the cattle and ensuring they graze freely. Cows and yaks are mainly raised for milk, which is used to produce butter, cheese, and yogurt. These dairy products are essential to the villager's diet and are also traded or sold in local markets. Goats and sheep provide wool and meat, with their wool often spun and woven into traditional garments or blankets. In regions like Gilgit Baltistan, Swat, and Chitral, Villages are often surrounded by terraced fields, where crops such as wheat, barley, and apricots thrive. The greenery of these fields contrasts beautifully with the dramatic snow-capped mountains that dominate the horizon. During spring and summer, the valleys bloom with wildflowers, turning the landscape into a colorful tapestry. In autumn, the villages take on a golden hue as trees like poplars and walnut turn vibrant shades of yellow and orange. The cool, crisp air and the sight of golden leaves falling against the backdrop of towering peaks create a magical atmosphere beyond the natural beauty. The mountain villages are also rich in cultural traditions. The people, known for their hospitality, live in a close-knit community where traditional practices and a deep respect for the environment are integral to daily life. <laughs>